The woman pebble count and you. What is the woman pebble count? The woman pebble count is a method of quantifying and classifying coarse sediments in the pursuit of characterizing their distribution, particularly concerning gravel bed streams. It can be used to help geologists understand a myriad of traits regarding a channel including its form, the involved hydraulics, the rate of erosion, the supply of sediment, and other such characteristics. How does it work in the field? To conduct a woman pebble count, you need at least two people, though more can allow for a backup record to ensure accuracy of the count. The tools required are relatively simple, though there is optional equipment that can be added. At the most basic level, however, the only thing required for this method is a metric ruler, a writing utensil, and a blank data table with the appropriate size categories to fill out. Optional equipment may involve a field sieve or a gravelometer in place of a ruler, making the measurement of samples quicker and prone to less human error than the ruler method. To perform a woolen pebble count, one individual will be performing the sampling and the other will be responsible for recording the results. The person choosing and measuring the samples will need to enforce randomness in order to achieve unbiased results. To sample in a way that encourages this, you are encouraged to select samples by walking about the intended sampling area in a random or zigzag manner, moving about the area and selecting samples at irregular intervals without seeing the sample you are choosing until you are measuring it. To measure the class, we must choose the correct axis. Rocks can be considered to have three axes. The A axis, otherwise known as the long axis, the B axis, otherwise known as the intermediate axis, and the X axis, otherwise known as the short axis. The key to defining these axes is that they are all normal or perpendicular to each other. The measurements for this method should be taken along the B axis. Once you have taken this measurement, call out the size so the person recording the data can hear you, then dispose of the sample class. The person recording the data must be attentive and accurate. Once their partner calls out the measurement, the recorder must mark it down on the table in the appropriate space. The recorder will be responsible for not only recording the size of the sampled class, but also to constrain the quality of the samples to some uniform figure across the sites sampled will be done. A consistent number of samples for each count will provide a more precise and accurate result. How does it work away from the field? So, you have returned from the field with a notebook full of pebble count data. What do you do now? You need to find a way to make this raw data into a more easily digestible form. Sure, you could do it all by hand. You could also start a fire with sticks, but using some kerosene and a lighter is probably more convenient. Thankfully, we have computers with wonderful programs such as Excel or Numbers. Using your spreadsheet software of choice, make a standardized table of your data as such. Once you have your table formatted with all of your data like this, then you are ready to turn the numbers into a visible product, or rather products. In order to most completely characterize the location sampled from the data collected, you can employ any number of plots. The two most commonly used are the volume percent frequency distribution plot and the cumulative percent distribution plot. The volume percent frequency distribution plot will consider the occurrence of each class individually how often the samples were of size class 1 or size class 2, etc. This allows you to determine the most prevalent size classification at the location. The cumulative percent distribution plot will consider the size classes as a series, adding each following size class to the preceding size class. For example, what percent were size class 1? What percent were size class 1 and size class 2? What percent were size class 1, size class 2, and size class 3, etc. These two plots together allow you to visualize the results of your counts and make informed interpretations of the data. There have been many different settings and stream varieties previously assessed in this manner, and so we can then take our data, specifically our recently conjured data plots from above, and compare them against established classes. By doing this, we may observe trends and relationship amongst our data and establish standards to make interpretations and meaningful conclusions in conjunction with other non-pebble count data gathered from the sampling location. And now, you know how to count pebbles scientifically.